What is up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at how to create and structure your brand's visual identity. This is an essential part of creating and cultivating a memorable and lasting first impression with your customers. So you need to approach it with caution and you need to approach it strategically. You'll want to take the time to fine tune how your brand looks and how your customers are first going to land upon the visual look and feel of your brand. That's exactly what we're going to be discussing in today's episode. We're going through the different factors you'll need to consider to creating a brand that is strong, memorable, and ultimately going to create success for your company long-term. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. This episode is going to be structured into three key sections all of which are extremely essential in terms of helping you build up that visual identity. Section one is going to be your brand logo. Two will be your corporate identity in the colors you choose. And lastly, your typography. What typefaces are we choosing? Are we creating a custom typeface? And how are we employing that typeface across all of our platforms? Starting off, we'll look at the brand logo. A brand logo consists of many different components, all of which start with a brand name. We won't go into depth in terms of what creates a good brand name on this episode. We can do a separate episode. If you guys want it, let us know in the comments below. Just know that your brand name is essentially going to turn into your word mark. If you look at a company like Nike, that italic bold font is their word mark. Nike, you create the word mark Nike. Then we're going to need to identify our logo mark. What is a logo mark? A logo mark is simple. It is a symbolic and a visual iconic cue that represents the brand. It doesn't need to be the name. It can in some cases be the name. It can be a monogram. It can be symbolic. It can be animal based. But at the end of the day, it's sort of a visual representation of the brand. With Nike, it's quite simple. The term Nike has been used to create the swoosh logo mark. So Nike is the word mark and the actual swoosh is the logo mark. Next, we need to look at how we can incorporate these logos or these artifacts and how do we join them together? There are two key ways to look at this. You have the horizontal lookup and then you have the vertical lookup. The horizontal lookup includes a logo mark with a brand name side by side, ensuring that they work well together. A company like Gymshark has a successful horizontal lookup where you have the Gymshark name on the left and then you have the shark icon on the right. A company like Nike employs a vertical lookup and they do this quite well. You have the Nike wordmark in italic on top and then the swoosh on the bottom. And this is also an extremely iconic combination of these marks. It's extremely important to look at your logo holistically and make sure that it has the versatility to be employed in these different contexts and scenarios. Moving on, you'll need to ensure that your logo is versatile, that it's both scalable. It works in large, medium and small formats. For example, a logo that is great in a medium sized context, but when scaled up it is far too simple or doesn't register the same effect is not a successful logo. The same can be said about a logo that is far too complex that only works at large to medium scales, but completely gets crushed in its negative space. Once you scale down to a certain size, a successful logo will work in all sizing formats. Also, you'll need to test your logo on its negative space ability. Some logos look great when they're made out of black pixel on a white background and they register sharply and clearly. However, when we invert those colors, issues arise with the actual negative space use. This is something you highly want to avoid. Always test your logo on both black and white and white and black contexts to ensure that you don't have any of these issues arising. Also, you'll need to make sure that your logo is still recognizable once it is mirrored. A logo that completely loses its visual appeal look and almost becomes unrecognizable is a logo that's far too concerned and far too complex within its own geometries. It cannot be read once you do a simple mirror flip. So bear that in mind. 
You'll also want to consider your logo mark and word marks size or its isolation specifications. Most times when you're using your logo mark, you're not going to have it up against any additional assets and you need to specify what is the ratio of space that I need around my logo at all times for it to register correctly. For example, you could say I need approximately 0.25x the space of my logo on the tops, the bottoms and the sides. I need to make sure that it has that padding so it can continuously register correctly. At the same time, provide a sizing specification, both for physical formats and for digital formats. This is extremely important, especially in fashion. When you're printing on clothes, you want to ensure that there's no excess print spillover. If you print your logo far too small and it is too dense of a logo, you're just going to get a solid mess of ink. So you could say my logo, once it's printed, can only be printed at 0.5 millimeters tall. This is the absolute minimum height that I can print a logo at. Also, concern yourself with your digital minimum size. So you most likely have a website. How is your logo going to be represented on the website? If you scale it down far too little, it won't register. So you may say my logo can be shown digitally at a minimum or a minimum height of 20 pixels. Be specific with your approach and follow it at all times. When considering your brand's visual identity, you'll also want to provide examples of what is known as unacceptable usage scenarios of your logo. For example, you can say things like, do not distort the logo, neither in the X or the Y directions. This is important so as to not completely flip what your logo is meant to look like. Also, you may say things like, do not rotate the logo. If you consider a company like Nike, where the logo is already strategically rotated at a certain angle to create a dynamic look and feel, all of which plays into the brand. If you rotate that Nike swoosh mark back to horizontal, it's going to end up being a parody of itself. So this is extremely important. You may also say, do not recreate the symbol or the logo mark with outside artifacts. Don't use additional fonts. Don't bring in new shapes. All of these things will help to keep your brand pure and clean. Also, you'll want to make sure that you don't add any additional artifacts or visual effects like glow effects, drop shadows, or anything that may cheapen the brand's look and feel. Number two, you'll want to establish your color selection. Colors are a great way to create a strong look and feel to your brand and getting the wrong colors can create a lot of problems for you down the line. It can completely portray your brand in a different light. So make sure to give it the time and the attention. When it comes to colors, you want to consider two key palettes, your primary color palette and your secondary color palette. Obviously, as it sounds, your primary colors will be used in a much larger proportion than your secondary colors. For each color you select, you want to consider three key values. Number one, the Pantone color code. This is extremely important when working with fabrics and textiles, AKA your physical product. You want to consider your CMYK values for that color. So each of these colors will almost have like three different representations of it, depending on which application you're going to use this color for. So your CMYK will be on all of your printed goods, brochures, etc. And then lastly, you'll want to consider your sRGB value for your digital purposes. Same can be said about your secondary colors. You'll also want to keep your color proportions in mind. Getting the right color proportions is key towards creating a balanced and effective brand. You can say something like, for my primary colors, I would like primary one to be 40%. Primary two should be 30%. And then my three secondary colors should be 10% each when they compose the total color proportions of the brand. Last, but not least, you'll want to carefully and strategically consider your brand's use of typography. Being consistent in your use of typeface is going to help enhance the strength and the look and feel of your brand. When it comes to typeface, you'll want to consider two key points, your primary or your main usage typeface, as well as your secondary or your alternative usage typeface. You'll also want to consider how these two font faces work well together. We can do a separate video in terms of how to combine and select the right fonts to combine together. But again, that's a separate topic for a second video. When it comes to selecting your font faces, make sure that you pick one that makes sense for the look and feel of your brand. Don't pick an overly luxurious and a very classical font if that's not what you're going for. You'll want to make sure that they make sense towards what you're trying to convey to your customers. When it comes to your font weights, aka that's how heavy each font looks, you'll want to consider a font that has a variety of different weights available. A good font will have a bold weight, it'll have a medium weight, 
a lightweight, and variations of italic weights. You'll also want to consider how this font performs in a variety of lighting, aka the distance between lines, and tracking scenarios, aka the distance between letters. Select a font that's going to be versatile and it's going to give you the ability to do a lot with it. Usually what I find is great fonts that are free off the internet will usually have limited usages to them. So make sure that you have a font that has a lot of variety to it and one that you can really grow into. That is a wrap guys. To recap quickly on today's episode, we went through three key points that all help you towards building a strong and consistent brand visual identity. We looked at the brand logo, how to structure your logo in different formats, how to use it and how not to use it. We also looked at your corporate color identity, how to select the right colors, how to specify the different values for them, and ultimately what proportions to specify for each of your colors, both primary and secondary. And lastly, we looked at your font families, how to select the right typeface that makes sense for your brand and how to create a font that is versatile and will stand the test of time and allow you to use it in a variety of different scenarios. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It really would mean a lot to us. Also consider subscribing. We put out great content on a week to week basis and we don't want you to miss out. Guys, thank you again for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.